Hi everyone, bonjour tout le monde, bienvenue sur ma chaîne. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a Provençal Christmas bread. The bread traditionally has on top of it a cross that represents Christianity and also helps to break the bread using the hands. So this is a bread that traditionally is not cut with a knife, but is cut with the hands. This bread is used to clean the plates, absorb the sauce during the Christmas supper. That's the reason why it's broken and is not sliced. I prefer to cut slices, so I will use a knife. So this bread is a savory bread. Uh, the difference between regular bread is it has a certain amount of uh, olive oil on it that um, has an impact on its uh, consistency. But the olive oil makes the bread very, very soft. So let's have a look at the ingredients and the utensils you will need to realize this recipe. To realize this recipe, you will need 400 grams of bread flour plus 200 grams of bread flour. 20 centiliters of water in two separate small glasses. One tablespoon of dry instant yeast. Four tablespoons of olive oil. And one tablespoon of salt. For the utensils you will need a Dutch oven. Mine is a cast iron type. That's the best option because it gets really, really hot. A square sheet of parchment paper, slightly bigger than the size of the Dutch oven. A baker razor blade or a very sharp knife. One regular tablespoon a kitchen towel, a bread banneton, or a sieve of 20 to 25 centimeter in diameter. A set of measuring spoons, one medium-sized salad bowl and a cooling rack a food processor with the hook attachment for bread dough The day before making your bread, you need to prepare the poulish. The poulish is going to give some sour flavor to the bread dough. Mix in the medium salad bowl 200 grams of flour, the yeast, and add only 20 centiliters of water. Mix with a spoon to a rough dough. You don't need to knead or over mix. Just make sure the flour is well combined with the liquid. Cover with a towel and let it ferment in your kitchen at room temperature overnight. The morning after you polish is bubbly and the color has slightly darkened. There is a slight scent of vinegar due to the overnight fermentation and this is what you're looking for. Now that your polish is ready, you are ready to start to make your bread dough. Set up your food processor with a large mixing bowl. Pour the 400 grams left of the flour into the mixing bowl. 
add the salt, the olive oil, and then the 20 centiliter remaining part of water into the bowl. Finally, you can add the overnight fermented polish. Lower the hook into the bowl and start the food processor at speed 1. Let the food processor mix the dough for 4 minutes. After 4 minutes, increase to speed 2 and this for another 6 minutes. In total, your dough will be mixed for 10 minutes. Don't overmix. After 10 minutes, your dough should be smooth, elastic, not too sticky, and rather firm when you hold it. Remove it from the mixing bowl and separate it from the hook attachment and let the dough drop into the bowl. Then all your hands with olive oil. Put the dough outside of the mixing bowl in the table counter. Add some olive oil into the bowl and coat the surface of the lower to the mid part. That will prevent the dough from sticking. Take the dough and shape it roughly with your two hands in the bowl shape and place it with a smooth surface up into the bowl. Cover with a wet kitchen towel. The wet kitchen towel will prevent the dough from crusting. What you're looking for here is to get rid of air into the bowl. Air oxidizes the surface of the dough and create a crust. Let the dough rise at room temperature away from draft for two hours. After two hours, your dough has more or less double in volume. Prepare your banneton, layer a kitchen towel inside of it. If you don't have a banneton, use the sieve. Take the dough out of the mixing bowl and place it into your working station. Fold the dough in itself by pulling corners to the center that's going to develop elasticity. I did it roughly seven times. Then flip the bowl with the round soft side up and start to roll it in itself by pulling the outer layer under the bread. Just do as I do in the video and try to feel that movement. That movement will create tension to the outer layer of the bread and create ultimately a nice crust when you bake it. It will also allow the bread to rise, somehow like a balloon. My bread surface dried a bit during the resting time and created a crust on the outside. So I stretch it more with that particular movement to make these marks disappear underneath the bread. Sprinkle a generous amount of flour into the banneton to prevent the dough from sticking to the towel in the bottom, but also in the sides of the towel. Take your bread bowl and put it a nice smooth part down to the banneton bottom. 
Now your bread is reversed, so sprinkle more flour to the now bottom part of the bread. And cover it with the corners of the kitchen towel. Let it rise for one hour at room temperature, away from drafts. After one hour, your bread dough has risen and is ready for baking. Take your Dutch oven near the banneton and open the lid. Make sure it is lined with the baking paper. Cut with a pair of scissors the corner if they are coming out too much of the Dutch oven walls. Take your banneton and flip it over to place your dough in the center of the parchment paper. Move quick. Then take the razor blade of the very sharp knife and cut deep the surface of the dough in a decisive motion in a cross shape. Place back the lid and bring the Dutch oven to the oven top. Set the oven temperature to the maximum. It has to be very very hot. Mine goes up to 240 degrees, so this is the maximum. So the bread will start to bake in a cold oven. Let the bread cook for 40 minutes without opening the oven with the lid on. After 40 minutes, you can open the oven and check the bread. It has risen, but it's still probably pale in color. You can remove the lid at that point and let it bake for another 15 to 20 minutes until it turns golden brown. Check it every 5 to 10 minutes to make sure that the bread doesn't burn. Open the oven and check. If the color is right to you, which is golden brown, if you prefer a darker bread in color, let it in the oven a bit longer. Then you can turn off the oven and take the Dutch oven outside of the oven. Be careful, it's burning hot. Bring the Dutch oven to your working station. Place something underneath to protect the table because it's very hot in my burn. I have a grill rack that I use to cool down breads and cakes. Remove the bread from the Dutch oven using a spatula and let it cool down on the grill rack for at least 30 minutes to get rid of the excess humidity contained inside the bread. After 30 minutes, you can cut your bread and you can eat it. Now your bread is ready. So this Christmas bread characteristic is the cross that you have on top. So. Let's cut it and see how it looks inside. So you can see it's already very crusty. So the dough inside is quite dense. Look at this. It's very, very soft. So let's try and see how it tastes. Mm. It's very soft. It has this delicate fermented flavor that has been created by the poulish uh, that we prepared the night before. It smells very good. It has this slightly sour um, smell that is typical from a fermented, um, fermented dough. It's a very soft, uh, soft dough.
It has the flavor of the south of France. That's because of the adding of the olive oil. The olive oil also helps the bread to keep the moist. So that also helps to preserve the dough and that bread wouldn't dry as fast as a regular one. And that's about it. The Provençal Christmas bread is ready. Hi everyone, thank you for watching that video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe or like the video. And I will see you next time for another video about Christmas.